Hi everyone, thank you for joining me here at The Homegrown Artist. My name is Barbara and you can find me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and don't forget to subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the video. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a watercolor painting. Yay, I haven't done one of these in a while. I think the last one was the negative painting watercolor video that I did, but that is more like a something that I've done many times. So um, it just kind of comes to me, but I've had the biggest watercolor block for like a year and a half now, maybe not that long, uh, a year and a few months. Last February, my two year old son passed away. And um, since then, like he, he did watercolors with me. He watercolored with me every time I did. And he, I mean, I have some of his watercolor paintings framed and there's his watercolor all over the wall that is not going away anytime soon. And so like when I go to watercolor, especially if I like try to do it like artistically and actually paint something or um, like even like getting new watercolor supplies, I get sad. And so I haven't really done much with that, but that's like a hurdle that I'm trying to get over because watercolor is my favorite medium in the world. I love watercolors um, and I have not done like real painting in like a year and four months going on. So yeah i just wanted to let you know that let you know i know that i used to post a lot of a lot more watercolor videos i'm pretty sure i've lost a few subscribers because i haven't been posting watercolor videos but um yeah that's been my problem for a long time so i'm tr i've been trying to get over that hurdle um really really hard and in today's video we're going to do that i'm going to paint this teacup this is a just a white teacup on a white plate really easy really simple something to kind of get me back into the groove of everything and we're going to be painting it on this is the 140 pound handmade natural indigo arts paper it's really pretty paper um i don't know if you can still if you can see the pencil marks i hope you can see the cup there coffee cup tea cup and uh we're going to be painting this with jackson's watercolors these are uh watercolors from jackson's art supply in the uk it's like their home brand of uh, watercolors and they're supposed to be very similar to Sennelia watercolors. These were sent to me by Kat Townsend. Um, you can find her on Instagram at Katty Art, K-A-A-T-E-E, -E, capital A-R-T, um, if you want to check her out. She was really, really sweet and sent them to me in this palette that I love. It's from uh, Hobby Lobby and it doesn't stain. Like, uh, I guess I can give you a little demo of how it doesn't stain. So these are the colors I was mixing for the painting. I was gonna have like leaves or flower or something on the painting, but okay, I said it doesn't stain and now it's staining. Oh no, my baby wipe is just dry. But you can see where I cleared, cleaned it off. There's no staining and that had green in it. Yay, I'm so excited. Um, so anyway, I love these palettes, they're really great. Uh, they also have the same exact thing on, on Amazon, so I will link that down below if you wanna check it out. Has 33 wells, it's really cool. So she sent me these Jackson's watercolors. Uh, it stops right here and then these are Sennelier and here are a few other colors she sent me that I just kind of added on into this palette. Um, so we're gonna be using those and just painting with them and trying them out. This is not a review or anything, it's just the paints that I'm using to paint this painting with. I will, however, do a swatch and review of these paints in the future and compare them to Sennelier watercolors. Um, so we're not gonna be really using a lot of colors um, from the set today. I think we're mostly gonna be using maybe three. I think, we'll see. So I know we're gonna be using Alizarin Crimson Deep. And then we are going to be using Indigo. And I'm gonna mix those two colors together to get my gray. So it's very close to like phthalo blue or, or a cooler shade of blue mixed with like burnt sienna almost because their lizard and crimson deep is very earthy. You can, I'll zoom in, you can see that. And then I know we'll be using Carmine. We're gonna mix that with the lizard and crimson deep and a yellow, the lemon yellow or yellow light. We're gonna mix those three to go together to get kind of the tea color and these two together to get the um, dark shadow colors for the white on the teacup. I think I may also use cobalt blue, which is another thing. I didn't even know I had 
Cobalt and Cerulean in this palette because like I said, she sent it to me after um, Avery passed. So I kind of didn't touch them. So I didn't know I had Cobalt Blue and Cerulean Blue from Jackson's in here. So I may use that color and mix it in to kind of get uh, a little bit of granulation. Does this granulate? Yeah, there we go. So those are the colors we're gonna be using today. For the paint brushes that I'm using today, I'm gonna be using the size 10 silver black velvet round. This is a synthetic scroll brush. And then this is like the first time I've used this brush. It was sent to me free by I think Jerry's Artorama when I ordered some watercolors. It's a size four Rhapsody Round Kalinsky Sable. And it has creative mark on there. Um, so we'll see how this paintbrush works. I don't know. I've never used an, an actual Kalinsky Sable. One, because they're expensive. Two, because they're animal hair. But those are the two brushes. And then I have just my normal um, microfiber cloth to get the wa excess water or paint off the brush. And my water bucket that I use. I'll have everything that I use linked down below if I can find it. All right, so I am going to speed this video up just so that it's not super long, but I am going to show you kind of how I'm going to mix the um, the colors. So I've already played with the colors a little bit, so I know kind of how I'm going to mix them. So for my gray, I don't want to have multiple shades of gray whenever I'm mixing. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a giant uh, puddle of like the darkest gray that I need and then water it down um, for the first few layers. So that is the... Elizabeth and Crimson Deep. And I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt to that. Just to get, just enough to get it kind of granulating. And I want kind of like a moon glowy ish gray. I think that's pretty close to moon gray, moon glowy ish. That is a color by Daniel Smith. If you haven't heard of that color, it's very pretty, like purple neutral tone. That is pretty close. So I think that is what we're going to use. I probably need to mix a little bit more than that because I'll be using a lot of gray in this painting. All right. So there is some more alizarin crimson deep. more cobalt and some more indigo I think I need a little bit more lizard and crimson more cobalt I want to keep that granulating I'll zoom in so you can see actually but you can see it's kind of granulating a little bit. I don't know how it's gonna do on this paper, but I'm pretty sure with the texture of the paper that it'll granulate. So yeah, that is the color we're gonna be using for almost, for a lot of the painting. And then for the tea, I have this kind of already mixed up. So it's a mixture of the Lizard Crimson, Carmine, and the yellow light to get kind of like the first orangey kind of layer and then later on I add a little bit more reds into it. I'll go ahead and show you that color. And then later on it'll get darker into like that color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started painting and I will see you when this is done. So I'm starting off by diluting that mixture that we made a lot and making it the lightest color that's going to be on this painting and then doing a wash over the entire painting so that the highlights that I have in my painting aren't the same color as the paper. They're not stark white. I, I don't want them to stand out that much. Um, and for some reason, whenever I first put the, these colors on or this color on it, looks more warm maybe it's the paper but whenever it dries it actually turns a little bit cooler which you'll see in just a little bit it looks more on the purpley side and so I let that dry and then came back 
And I'm just pointing out there's like a piece of something inside the paper. It's not anything that I did to the paper. And then also that I clipped down the paper because it was warping just a little bit, but I didn't feel the need to tape it down. So now I'm taking that mixture that we made earlier and doing like a first initial wash on the tea that is inside the cup. And I'm making sure to um, leave the areas for the highlights. Um, there's some highlights in the tea that kind of reflect. And here I'm just pulling a little bit of that color into those highlights. So these highlights as well are not stark white. There is one little section that's like the lightest gray color of the cup. Um, that's kind of directly in the middle top part of the tea. And then I take a darker mixture of that um, gray that we made and I start adding shadow to the left of the cup because the light is coming from the top right. And I just continue to do that and blend the color, trying to make it more dark on the left. And then I'm kind of working around everything so I don't have to use the blow dryer to dry too much. I think I need to use it like once in the whole video. Um, so now I'm just working on the shadow using that same gray mixture that I did on the cup just to get a first layer. And I'm doing this painting in a lot of layers because Sennelier paints are really, really known for their layers, their capability to do a lot of really gorgeous layers. So I wanted to test these Jackson watercolors out to see if they could do the same thing. And I have to say they are excellent in layering. So I really like them. So that was me using the blow dryer to dry everything. And then here I'm doing the reflection from the tea onto the cup. So like just a little ring around the cup and then I'm gonna blend it in with the shadows inside the top of the cup. So at first I'm just pulling it out with water and adding water around the cup, making sure I don't touch the ring on the top of the cup because that is all in white where the light is hitting it. And then I'm adding the gray and I don't mind if the gray kind of mixes in with that light orange color because that's kind of how it does because that light orange at the top is just a reflection. And so because the light is coming from the top uh, right, it's gonna be darker on the right on the inside of the cup and a little bit lighter on the left of the cup. And then I'm using that same gray to add shadow around the whole inside of the plate. And you can kind of see the differences here. Like when you first add that color on, I think it's the paper, I'm not sure. But when you first add that color on, it looks warmer and then as you can see it dries cooler so it's a really weird phenomenon i don't know if the it's the paint or the paper and right here i am also leaving like the rim um, highlight uh, blank i'm not adding any more color other than that first initial wash and while that is drying, I'm going back into the tea and adding the bottom part of the tea where the tea is kind of settled at the bottom part of the cup. And um, adding a highlight in there too where the light is kind of hitting it, but not a stark highlight, just a slight highlight. And then diluting that gray again, but a little bit darker and going back into the shadow at the bottom of the cup. And filling that in again. And you can see how beautifully these glaze which is awesome. So that, that shadow and then the shadow underneath the cup are going to be the darkest uh, shadows. So I'm building darker and darker layers there. Um, I don't want to do it all at once because I don't want it to get too dark. Uh, I want to work in layers so that I can kind of get the values right. And this is actually a highlight it's going to be lighter than everything else, but it's not going to be as light as some of the other highlights. So I just go ahead and paint that in a little bit. And I did not actually make enough paint. This is a giant cup. <laughs> um, so I mix some more, but I mix it uh, almost exactly the same color as the one before. So now I'm going straight in with um, that dark color and then kind of blending it out underneath the cup. Right underneath the cup is going to be really, really dark because like no light is getting to it except for a piece of the cup that is actually there that I kind of painted over on accident but we'll fix that in a little bit and kind of um, clear that out so you can tell that it's actually the bottom piece of the cup but it's still in shadow but you can still kind of see like a highlight on it where the light hits it and then I'm just blending that gray um, all over and I add like an accent underneath the um, like a dark shadow underneath the handle of the cup and then also where the cup is like um, casting a shadow as well 
and I go around, there's like a, a little highlight on the plate and I go around that and again, staying around the rim, not touching that with any more paint because I want that to be my lightest light. And then here, instead of adding more paint, because this is where most of the light is hitting it on the right side of the cup of the plate, I just blend the rest of it out with water. And then here I'm getting the scrubby brush to try to lift up some of those highlights. And I go back in and just a little bit uh, to finish that. I just wanted to make sure at that time that I could do that. So now I'm adding more to the shadow down at the bottom. And here, instead of going in with the paint all the way through, I kind of stop towards the end and then add a little bit of water. And you can kind of see that line there where I did that. Um, so here I'm making those shadows kind of stand out just a little bit more, the cast shadows and kind of changing the shape of it a little bit. Making sure to not go over the highlight section of like the little U highlight section or the little squiggly highlight section. I'm not gonna paint over those anymore for now. And I'm just adding a little bit more pigment to there and then I'm gonna blend the rest of it out with water because again, I don't want this side of the plate to get any darker, I want it to stay light other than where the plate is kind of bent and where the rim has like a shadow on it, which is this right here that I'm doing. And then I kind of take a clean brush and just kind of pull that shadow down just a little bit. And here I'm adding more shadows to the left of the cup, um, just to make it a little bit darker. And then again, blending out with water towards the right because the right part of the cup is the lightest part of the cup and I don't want to add any more color to that. I think maybe this paper just whenever it's wet has a really warm hue to it. So now I'm going back into the inside of the cup and I'm going to add a little bit more of that um, gray to the right side of the inside of the cup and then kind of further down and a little bit on the left but I want that highlight kind of on the top left. And then I'm also going in with a little bit more of that tea color just to kind of intensify everything. And then I blend it out with water instead of paint towards the right because the light is again hitting that side. Um, and now I'm going into the handle and putting in some colors there. And I forgot this paper soaks up paint a lot quicker than Arch, which is what I normally use. Uh, so it didn't blend out the way I wanted to. So I just went over it a little bit with some darker color and then lifted up some of that color. So then I notice that there's a bloom starting in the tea, so I just go over and fix that. And then I scrub up some of like the highlight underneath the teacup where it's actually sitting on the plate. And um, then I mix up some more of that darker gray and I start adding that to the shadow portion underneath the plate. But because the light is coming from the top right, um, it's darkest on the left. And then, so what I do is blend it out with water for the rest of the way starting here. Uh, because it is a little, the shadow is a little bit lighter to the right. And then I go in uh, and add with that same color and add just like a little darker um, shadow underneath the, the rim of the plate. And then I adjust some of the values right underneath the cup and in that U shape of the uh, shadow where the cup is casting that shadow. And then I let it dry. So this is the finished product, um, just a plain whitish grayish coffee cup. Uh, it's mostly shadows, which is why it's so gray. So there's like shadows here, a shadow here, under here. So there's like strong light coming up there. That's why there's the white ring kind of up there. But I did enjoy painting this. Um, I love the Indigo Arts paper, although it had like weird, it has a weird, I don't even know what to call it. Something is inside of the paper, like whenever they handmade it something got stuck in there or something, but that's okay. Um, I do really like the Jackson's um, watercolors. They glaze beautifully, especially on this paper. I haven't tried them on any other paper, but they really do glaze just very, very beautifully. So I really like them. And I actually really do like the Alizarin Crimson Deep, although I wouldn't use it like I would use an Alizarin Crimson. But there will be a few full review on the those watercolors in the future. But for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. It does let you know when I come out with new videos. 
And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section down below. Um, I love getting comments from you guys. It's awesome to chit chat with you. And as always, everything that I use in the video will be linked down in the description bar down below. Um, if I can't find something, I'll try to put something a little bit similar um, down there as well so you can kind of shop around. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.